Good morning, St. Francis. Clint Wilson, your rector here with your Tuesday morning devotional. I want to talk a little bit about justice today. You know, uh, last week, Teresa and I were hanging out next to a beautiful stream, and we were both sitting in uh, our, our camping chairs, and we were doing some reading and journaling. It was really wonderful and peaceful. And his son walked up. His son was probably maybe five or six years old. And they began to have a delightful time together. His son was wearing a bathing suit and had a fishing net and goggles, which he promptly put on. And he jumped into the water, which was not that deep, by the way. And he began to hunt for fish or really any living thing that he could find. His father positioned himself up on a bridge that was above the stream. So he was looking down into the water and his son swam around and really struggled to find something here or there, something that was perhaps alive or maybe not, probably not. But as he went into the deeper portion of the river, which was still only a few feet deep, his father was above him, looking down, yelling directions, telling him, Max, Max, just behind you there are several dozen minnows or whatever he was saying. And of course, the sun couldn't hear him because he was underwater. The water was muddy and the sun was really struggling to find much of anything at all. But eventually, he lifted his head out of the water and he heard his father calling to him, giving him direction, giving him instruction for where to turn for an abundant catch, which he did. And he caught, I don't know, a dozen or more uh, minnows in his net, which of course he was thrilled about. You know, that's an instructive example for us as we consider how do we enter into the abundant vision of justice that we see in Scripture? And what is that vision exactly? Well, the Bible is not silent on the issue of justice. The word for justice is mishpat, and it appears throughout Scripture all the time. We see just in the Old Testament alone that the word for justice appears 400 times. It's the same word for righteousness, which appears 130 times in the Old Testament, depending on how you translate it. But when we talk about justice, we often have a lot of different ideas in mind. Is it social justice or individual freedom or whatever's best for everyone? Is it living in accordance with some strict moral code or more? What is the biblical vision for justice? I think we need to take a deep breath and lift our heads out of the water and turn to our Father and to the words that come to us through Scripture to understand what God's justice looks like. Well, the word for justice in the Old Testament is mishpat. And in Micah 6, 8, we come across a famous passage that is oft quoted, and it goes like this. He has told you, O mortal, what is good, and what does the Lord require of you but to do justice and to love kindness and to walk humbly with your God? This word justice, mishpat, is so important for the Jewish tradition, and then for the Christian tradition that follows it. We see Jesus, who embodies perfect justice on the cross, especially. In the development of the Western tradition, the Judeo-Christian worldview, the vision of justice from Scripture, so drove our own understandings of justice, especially in the United States. It's hard to imagine that we would have the system of justice that we have without the Bible. Nevertheless, not everyone seems to experience the same degree of justice. Again, turning to the Bible, what does the word mishpat mean? Well, mishpat, that word for justice, it means to make the rights of others or the lack thereof our concern. So justice is to make other people's problems our problems. So Micah seems to be saying, do mishpat, that is rooted in mercy and motivated by humility. In other words, treat other people's difficult situations as your own. And that, my brothers and sisters, Micah would say, is mishpat, is justice. And indeed, that is what we are called to as well 
as Christians who walk in the way of this God revealed to us in the Bible and most fully in Jesus Christ. Because you see, Jesus took on our problems. He made our problems of sin and brokenness and injustice. He made those problems his problem so that we could be set free, so that we could enter into the life of abundance. So as we're in murky waters in this season, it might be hard to see straight ahead, or it might be hard to see where to turn so that we can enter into the abundant life. I suggest that we lift our head above the murky waters and we turn to the Father who gives us a vision for justice that helps us to make the problems of other people our own problems, such that true justice and righteousness can prevail. And this is a vision that Jesus calls us to, to treat other people with dignity. I'll end with a quote, and it comes from a book called The Dignity Revolution by Daniel Darling, and it goes like this. Imagine for a moment if God's people began to lead a new quiet revolution whose foundation was a single premise. Every human being, no matter who they are, no matter where they are, no matter what they have done or have had done to them, possess dignity because every human is made in the image of God. By God's grace, our churches would change and our communities would change. That's a beautiful quote. You see, when we make the problems of other people our problems, we pursue justice and we recognize what we recognize in our baptismal formula, in our covenant, in the Book of Common Prayer, which is really the Apostles' Creed with a few other commitments tagged onto it, which is to say, we treat people with the dignity that they deserved, people made in the image of God, because we take their problems on as our problems, even as Jesus has done the same for us. So let us be a people and a church and a community and a city that pursues justice, that makes the problems of others our own. In doing so, we are walking in the way of Christ. Amen.